Hey there, YouTube followers, Michael of Painting War Games. Taking a look back at 2014, as far as Games Workshop products go, um, we're, this is going to be 40K and fantasy related, so this is a great time to discuss looking back at what we got. Um, and with the news of Warhammer Fantasy getting another thing, I'll talk about that. Um, now, please note, I'm probably not going to remember everything that. Uh, both, uh, you know, Fantasy and 40K got this year because, to be honest, they both got a lot of stuff. And half the year I was focused on 40K, and the later half of the year I've been focused on Fantasy. Uh, as you guys know, with the uh, little uh, Warriors of Chaos here. So, yeah. So, let's just go through. I have the list on Games Workshop opened up here. And I'm going to just sort of ramble on what I remember came out. Um, Adaptus Assortas, uh, Sisters of Battle. They've got their own, like, iPad codex. I remember them getting that. Imperial Guard got a codex this year. Uh, the Imperial Guard got a hardback codex. So Sisters of Battle did not. They just got, like, a you know tablet version. Uh, Blood Angels got a codex. Uh, Dark Eldar got a codex, so that's three. Eldar got a codex, that's four. Grey Knights got a codex, that's five. Um, Imperial Knights, I'm going to call it because they actually have their own codex, that's six. Um, Inquisition, I th Inquisition, I thought, got like a PDF type download like the Sisters of Battle last year. Because uh, I remember them talking about, hey, you know, you know, should this be in there or not. Um, Imperial Tempest, or the Millennium Tempest, I, I honestly think that's a supplement to Imperial Guard. But it has its own codex. It says that codex. It does not say a supplement. So I'm wondering if that is a supplement to the guard. But I'm going to call that as seven. Um, the assassins are the assassins. I don't know. They don't have anything. They just have models. Uh, so uh, we're down to orcs. That was eight. We got an orc codex. We got uh, space wolves. That's nine. And I honestly can't remember if tyrannies came out in 2014. Part of me wants to say yes. So that'd be 10 codexes that 40k got, and trust me, it has been a very heavy 40k year. Um, because I think the good part of the first six months, seven months, put maybe, I think it almost has to go seven months out of the year. The first seven months were 40k focused, and you just saw codexes, models, and shit just coming out of this. And that's not including all the supplements that we got. I know Space Marines got, I think, one or two supplements alone this year. Um... I, you know, I just can't think of them off the top of my head. But yeah, they they got a ton of stuff. So, you know, we saw ten potentially ten codexes for 40k this year, and it it honestly could be eleven if Nids were in it, and it, you know, so give or take one or about two or three on each side. Um, I know demons didn't come out this year, and if they did, wow, did I forget about them? Because um, demons was a dual release. So, uh, we saw Blood Angels just recently. Now, Necrons were rumored to come out before the end of the year. Uh, we haven't gotten an actual release, so I'd imagine it's January or February we'll see Necrons. And I tell you guys this, I have not sold my Necron army. My Necrons are going to stay, and I will buy that book. Like, I own the Orc Codex. I'm going to buy the Necron Codex. Uh, now, how fast? I don't know, because I've got a big project in the works. Um, you know, I might be getting something great. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to take that with a grain of salt that I might, if Necrons get a codex, it, I probably won't get it till August. <laughs> so if it comes out, apologize now, I'm not going to do the codex review. I'm, I'm actually probably going to scrap the order, the or codex review. You know, I got like one or two sections left to do. I might get to it. I'm not sure. So, okay. Warhammer Fantasy. What did we get? We got a ton of end time books. I mean, oh my gosh, I I don't even know where to begin. I wish they just had all these things grouped up into one. I think there's three end time books that actually came out this year. Um, let me type it in here. Because I, I know of three, and there could have been possibly a fourth. So, okay. There was three. Uh, Nagash. That was the first one with the, and that, Nagash, I don't know fantasy I will, but Nagash brought the vampire accounts and the Tomb Kings together from what I understand. 
um, brought him as a head, you know, great stuff. Um, and then, I am not even going to attempt to say this next book. It's the Nurgle book, or, okay, um, it's actually Glutton. Uh, really? Is it Glutton? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we saw Nagash, and then we got Glutton, which Glutton was Chaos Demons in Warriors of Chaos, from what I understand. Um, you saw a merger there, because you had the, yeah, so it is the Glutton, because that's the model. Um, you saw, like, Nurgle stuff come out, and Warriors Chaos, and Demons sort of mix, which always, in my opinion, even in the 40k side, always made sense. You know, Warriors Chaos, um, and Demons working together, and Chaos Space Brains, and 40k Demons working together. Because they're, they're a part of the same faction, so... Um, the overall, I mean, the overall, like, goal, they're both evil, and they do work together in the lores, in the fluff together, so it, it made sense bringing those two to each other. Um, and then we saw Kane. Um, Kane, I don't know what Kane did, as far as a book goes to their magic system, but from what I understand from the Sustainable Center, it, just, like, just murdered it. So, yeah, it's, it's, Wow. Uh, a lot of great models came out for Fantasy 2. You know, Nagash is a model that is huge. It's big. Um, the Glutton's big. I'd imagine there is a Kane model out there, or it is coming out. I don't know. I, I haven't actually seen this thing. But I'd imagine the Kane model will be a $100 model. If they don't have it yet. Because the Glutton is 109 Nagash is 105, so, you know, you're, there should be a model uh, in your future coming out. And there is, they announced another uh, End Times book uh, for Fantasy, and it seems like they just rolled with this, you know. End Times, you know, Fantasy didn't get 9th edition this year. They were slated for the 9th edition. What happened uh, was 7th edition came out for 40K, because 40K makes a lot of money for Games Workshop. Space Marines alone, I believe, sells more. Uh, models than the entire fantasy line, like the the Space Marine f brand, like you know, sells more models than the all the mob all the factions in uh, fantasy, which makes sense um, because they did sort of break sixth edition with Escalation and un and you know uh, Unbound. Well, Unbound was for seventh, but yeah, they they broke the mold with Escalation and you know the new Apocalypse book, which was. Awesome, you got four total models in that thing. They just did so much to break 40k that they had to create a new edition to say, okay, these are the rules that we set in stone. Sorry, we broke 6th edition a year and a half after it uh, launched. And I almost have a feeling they knew that 6th edition was broken. Because, you know, 6th edition had to have been made for a while and yada, yada, yada. Um, so this time they're actually... They're not bad, you know, they, they're doing the same thing with fantasy. You know, the End Times books is, is like, you know, supplements. It's like uh, the fortifications and escalation for 40K. But this time they, they pumped out these releases first with an old, with an aging rule system. You know, 8th uh, edition is on its 6th year, I believe, 5th or 6th year now. Yeah, because they go in 4-year rotation, so yeah. So they go in these giant... You know, it, it, you know, it's on its fourth or fifth year, and it's coming up on its sixth year. So they, they just, they've pumped out all this guck. They're like, okay, we know ninth edition is coming up, but we're gonna get all this stuff out of the way. We're gonna pump it out. We're just gonna feed it. We're just gonna pump it out. And when ninth edition comes out, it'll all make sense. And I really think that's the point: is that they're getting all this, this craziness out for fantasy. Um, and ninth edition is gonna tie it all together. You know, Fantasy got codexes this year. Um, it, ever since uh, the End Times has come out, though, they really haven't got any. Um, part of me wants to say that High Elves got redone this year, and I believe so. I know Dark Elves did. Um, Warriors Chaos definitely did, because I'm into them. Uh, Vampire Counts, I seem to remember. What else? What else I know did, because... I was going to jump head over tail into what else. I was like, all right, that's the codex I'm going to use to get into it. Um, I know Bretonia and Beastmen still haven't gotten done. 
Uh, dwarves haven't gotten done. I don't think. Maybe they did. I'm gonna click on here. Okay, dwarves did get done. Uh, Skaven haven't gotten done. The I don't know if the Empire got done or not. I'm just clicking and looking. Yeah, the Empire got done. Uh, Tomb Kings obviously got done. Vampire Counts. What else? See, uh, Lizardmen got redone. Um, Oak Kingdoms was on the cusp of 8th edition. Or was at the 8th edition when it first launched. Same with Orcs and Goblins. So I imagine somewhere in 9th edition, um, they'll get all the rest of these codexes hardback. And they'll probably update Ogre Kingdom, Ogre Kingdoms and Orcs and Goblins at some point to bring them up to snuff. Same with Beastmen and Bretonia. If, and see... I don't, what I hear is Bretonia and the Empire are sort of like the exact same faction, just like, it's basically the same models, it's just, it's just a little bit divergence. So you might see the Empire and Bretonia get smashed together as a book. Um, I wouldn't like that, it, you know, but it could be done. So, you know, just that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, with, with fantasy, you know, it, it was a good year. It, Come August, it started pumping out the action. And, you know, it was a great year uh, for it. Um, you know, and, it, you know, for all intents and purposes, 2014 was Warhammer, for, was Warhammer Fantasy. Or, I mean, Warhammer 40K. 2014 was Warhammer 40K, for all intents and purposes. It was the year that they fixed the system. It's the year that they created this great divide in the system. It made players like me stop playing and look at fantasy. Now, granted, fantasy is going through the exact same problems that 40K did, but they're doing the um, this problem thing pre ninth edition. Um, as with 40K, they had launched sixth edition, and then they caused all these problems. And they're like, "Oh, we got to create a new rule set to fix it." I would have been I would have been a little bit more okay. If they had postponed 6th edition and said, okay, we're going to get all this crap out, we're going to tweak the 6th edition rules, and then we're going to launch 6th edition, it would have made me swallow 6th edition better instead of saying, I just dropped 80 bucks on a rule book in a year and a half, it's obsolete. It really ticked me off. I still have this thing over there you know, on the shelf. It's The binding is off it, but, you know, I, I'm not going to get rid of it because in my mind, 6th edition, I loved it. I liked it. I don't like how they broke it, but... Um, Hence why I'm waiting with Fantasy. 2015, in my opinion, will be Warhammer Fantasy's year. You will see every codex updated in that line, in my belief, by the end of the year of 2015. Um, I almost want to believe that they they will... And I've heard that they do have their own version of uh, Apocalypse. But I don't, I've never seen like an Apocalypse as a book. There's something on the Forge World... There's a book for it, I imagine. Um, but I, if they don't, they will get like an, an apocalypse as a book. That will just be huge. It, it will be their apocalypse. Um, I imagine you'll see, if, if they don't get an allies matrix in fantasy, um, they will have like a faction type matrix. Like, okay, these the elves can work together. And, you know. Um, it's sort of like what the End Times is doing, but it will be in their big rule book. It will set it in stone that this is how it is. Um, I'd imagine, you know, lizard men will probably be on their own. Um, but who knows? I don't see lizard men and Skaven teaming up because, you know, reptiles traditionally eat mammals. But yeah, you, there will be factions lined up, like all the elves will work together. And I'm pretty sure lizard men won't be left out of the coop like Tyranids did. But Tyranids were the, are the most alien out of any race that Games Workshop has produced. To the point where I think Ridley Scott almost sued him for it. <coughs> so. Yeah. Um, 2015 is going to be big for fantasy. Um, 40k will get its wrap-ups. Necrons will get redone. They're slated for, like I said, January or February, somewhere in there. And then what what lies ahead for 40k is supplements and enriching the lore and the fluff uh, what I mean by that is it will it will like they're gonna create more supplements I tell you what they make me a salamander supplement I don't care if I don't play Salam I don't care if I don't play space brains anymore I'm buying that $50 book because I am a salamanders guy I'm planning on getting me a salamanders tattoo you know their symbol over here sometime in the next 10 
I'm going to say 10 years because it might take me that long to get it. But yeah, I'm going to, you know, that's how it is. Uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of supplements and you're going to see a lot of data slates and they're not going to ignore 40k. It's just going to be on the back burner. Like, they're, they, I'm pretty sure they are well aware that the fantasy fans and fantasy players are feeling a little underappreciated. So, um, now that the Hobbit is actually all done, uh, because there's no more Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, they got really nothing else to do this time next year, uh, as far as models go for that line. So, I imagine you'll see a drop off of the Hobbit. Something else will come in. They'll, they'll have a third gaming system. They're either that or they're going to make more models for the Hobbit. I don't, I don't know why. I or particularly care for. I don't particularly care for the Hobbit movies. I was a Lord of the Rings type of guy, but you know that's just me. But yeah, there's going to be major changes with fantasy. Uh, their magic system, I know, is currently under debate. Uh, tournaments, you know, TOs don't know what to do with their tournaments because they comp them. And they don't know how far or which way it's going to go. The next End Times book is announced. It's probably going to have Skaven in it, which will update Skaven to a degree. It won't give them a new codex. Um, but which, and this is, has been said, I do not believe that they'll release any codexes for Fantasy until 9th edition launches for them. But if they do, it, they will be codexes like the Necrons were pre-6th edition. Necrons launched in the fall, and there was a lot of rules that people, you know, they understood because they were made for the intensive purpose of, you know, this how things were going to go. Um, you know, and when the new 6th edition launched, everything made more sense. There was units that in 5th edition were like, why would you take that? You know, Goss weapons didn't make any sense. But 6th edition came around and hull points were introduced and now Goss weapons were amazing because you could glance stuff to death. Not that you couldn't do it in 5th edition, it just it made more sense in 6th edition. Um, and yeah, the meta got switched and that's it's going to happen for fantasy. I, I can see it and I, the community is saying it. And you know this guy, guys this is going to be another rant. Um, but yeah, that's what's happening. Uh, fantasy's in for a big year for 2015 and if it doesn't happen well, then I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong as of December 31st, 2014 at 12, 14 a.m. Yes, I am a night guy, guys. I stay up till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and probably tonight I'll be up till 5 or 6. And I'm doing this video now because I have a, a big bonfire I'm going to later on today. And I've got a computer I'm going to open. <laughs> yeah, you guys... You guys will see something with that here soon. Uh, I've got an, a big announcement. If I can... If, if it goes through right, there will be a big announcement as far as videos and stuff like that coming. Uh, and like I said, 2015, I the last two days, guys, have been amazing for me. I was voted a real hero of the month for my job, which is a, which effectively means um, employee of the month. My peers voted for me. I'm, I'm one of the hardest working people I work that I know that I work with. And I tell you what, I... I have busted my butt at this job for nine months, and now it's starting to sort of come together. You know, uh, training options coming open. You know, just it, it's nice to to have people show you gratitude. You guys have been amazing lately on that. You guys are like, hey, you know, Dave, uh, Harry Davis, or man, I'm gonna screw up your name because I'm I'm sort of in the wind right now. I'm gonna look it up right quick. Sorry, guys. Where are you? Yeah, Harry. Um, I tell you what, man, your comments, uh, I see bear, your comments, um, Remco, Max, um, you guys have, over the last month and a half, have really helped me out, um, because I, you guys know that I was, I've been toying with the idea of really putting this channel as a back burner. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, let me know a lot. 2014 brought a lot of things, uh, you know, because I'm in anime, so I read Bleach. Uh, that, I can't even be getting, that'd be another 20 or 30 minute rant right there. Um, yes, I mean, <laughs> come on, guys. You guys don't think I like Bleach. Look at that. That's my tattoo. That's hollow. Yeah, <laughs> I love me some Bleach. But yeah, um, 2014 has ended with a high note for me. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Games Workshop, even though it's stumbled throughout the year, is ending on a high note. Uh, 
with their customers because I'm looking forward to. I telling you guys this now, when Ninth Edition launches and that starter set comes out, I'm buying it. And I have been holding. I have been. My finger has been on the trigger, just itching to just pull that trigger. Um, I don't want to buy Blood Island because one, I don't like. I don't like High Elves or Skaven. Like the models are cool. It's not something I want to work on though. It's not something that I want to play. Um, but when Ninth Edition comes out, I'm really tempted just to get the box set, whatever it is, because um, I know it will probably be a good versus evil, and Bretonians are rumored to be in it. So I'm hoping Warriors of Chaos will be in it, or Demons um, will be in it. Because I tell you what, and, you know, if Vampire Counts are in, I'll, or uh, sorry guys, I got a little. Gassy right there. Uh, Tomb Kings are in it. I'm going to buy it because you know what? Ninth edition, I want that little mini rule book. And I tell you what, those starter sets have great value. You get the mini rule book, everything you need. You get a bunch of models. And I tell you what, ninth edition, I'll have the rule book, which I want, which will be worth the $100 price tag to me. And the models, regardless of what they are, I'm going to paint them. And if they don't involve Warriors Chaos or something like that, you know, to what I want, because um, I'm only going to really concentrate on these guys this year. I'm going to try to get three or 4,000 points of these uh, by this time next year, hopefully, and have games underneath my belt. Yeah, the, if fantasy is going to be my year uh, for 2015, and if, if there is a one army that I would like to buy and paint, it would be what else? Their models just look great. I just, everything I've heard, it's just like, you know, I've got to, I've got to hold the trigger on that one. But ninth edition, when the starter set comes out, and it's probably going to be around May. They'll probably announce it late May, right around my birthday. Uh, it'll probably come out June. Will be the book. Will be the big. Will be the big Bible for them. Um, and you're going to say July or August for the starter set. So right around then, which all goes to plan. I'll have a new PC that's already paid for. My glasses here will be paid for. Everything. You know, hopefully I'll be a manager by then. Where I'm at, you know, it, things will be looking good. So, all right, guys, I've been ranting for over 20 minutes now, and that was not my intensive purpose. But looking at back at 2014, like I said, it's been it's ended off on a good note. It really has. I have high hopes for 2015. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting my painting service going. Uh, you know, um, I <laughs> like I said, I'm going to try to remember to put my email in the link or in the description below um, so you guys can email me if you guys want stuff painted I'm a reasonable guy you know I'm, I'm doing this for you guys I'm really doing it for the, the youtubers um, I'd like to make it a business but right now I'm gonna do it for the fans um, like I said I'm gonna be a reasonable guy on what you guys want and what how much I'm gonna charge you guys for so alright guys this is Michael of Painting War Games. Keep gaming. And man, let's hope that 2015 brings a great year to our hobby. See you in the new year.